with Oakwood Machine Works. I'm doing a quick video to show you this new tool I have called the Pearson Mini Pallet System. This is a fantastic tool if you do a lot of repeat setups or if you do uh, a lot of production work even if it ends up not being a repeat. So what this thing is uh, if you haven't heard of Pearson Work Holding, go and look him up, Jay Pearson. Uh, the guy does amazing work, and he's really thought of everything, but what this is is a pallet system. So, basically, it holds down a big piece of aluminum, and you can mount your fixture in two said piece of aluminum. Whenever you pull up on this little knob, say you pull up on it, it releases these detents, which are basically like a pull stud, except inverse on a VMC. So what happens is, this pallet locates on these two pins, and you get your Z-repeatability along these hardened steel strips, because it's an aluminum base. So air pressure gets applied. Note that it gets its hold down pressure when there's no air pressure to the base. So even if you completely lose power in compressed air, your piece stays solid. So, you can see how I have it plumbed in here. Uh, something else to note before I get to it. Jay had to have known that Tormach users were going to be using these because he provided a T that perfectly fits the power drawbar air line, which just ha so happens to go to my supply line. So that made the install really easy. And basically, I ran the line up and through the top hole of my enclosure down to the handle, and then fed down through to stay out of the way, and to the pallet. So with that lifted up, uh, we'll go over and talk about the pallets here for a second. Uh, this is one I made, and these pallets, the base pallets, cost about $100 a piece. I can't afford to spend $100 on some of these fixtures. It would eat up a lot of my profit margin. And of course you could pass that on to the customer, but you don't want to do that if you can avoid it. So what I did was create these sub plates that go on top of the Pearson pallet. They get bolted down with four quarter twenty screws. And they get located with these very tight fitting have one right here. Three sixteen style pins. Uh, I was given several boxes of hundreds of these things. And I interpolated two holes, that one they get lined up ever so perfect, they bring a plate into alignment with the pallet. Now these are really, really easy to machine, because I index off of this bottom corner, and everything is in reference to that bottom corner. Everything. So it just kind of perfectly lines up, and it's quick and discreet. So these are the parts I'm machining. Their face plates for a local company's product, you can see it on my Instagram. And they get bolted down with these 832 screws, and I put a uh, hex nut on there so I can take a wrench, because this is a really small Allen key. I can give them just a tweak to tighten it down. You just have to be careful not to strip the screws doing that. So they get cut, held down with tabs, they get profiled with an eighth inch cutter, and it's been working really well for me. Uh, I was throwing parts. I got about six done out of a vise, and I started throwing parts just because of only holding on to 45 thousandths of an inch. I had people tell me I was crazy, and they were right. It didn't work very well. I broke a end mill doing it. So, an issue I was having was uh, it'd be why y-axis uh, parallelism because the parts can shift back and forth and that makes this it makes me get steps along this back plate this back part of the face plate and the front where I contour around so what I did was I put 440 screws in here that are perfectly parallel with each other uh, just to demonstrate how parallel they stay one, two, three block isn't going to span it. But if you put a parallel block between these three, 
you don't get any rock between them, and that goes for any given set. So parallelism is perfect, and it shows in the parts, because... Let me grab one here. I'm not getting a step in the back of them, which would be very apparent otherwise. So I'm going to do a video on making these subplates, and in fact tomorrow I might be doing a video on actually making a uh, pilot, or a fixture plate for one of these. So kind of like a Saunders Machine Works plate, but for the Pearson. So, the cost of these is very minimal. Aside from the cost of uh, two pallets and the base, like I said, the pallets are about a hundred bucks each. I can't spend that on a pallet. So what I did was I got a big honking chunk of 3 8 aluminum, and I chop it up. So it gets processed with those four clearance holes and the dowel pins, and the total cost for one of these things is like 10 bucks, which is the cost of a set of large soft jaws, which I almost always use when I'm using ice. So, while they have different applications, it doesn't cost me any more to use my pallet system than it does to set up in a vise. Which is amazing. So just to demonstrate here, uh, if I can pick it up one-handed. You want to make sure that your system is on and you don't drop your pallet. These weigh about 10 pounds a piece. So it just kind of drops on, locates with the pins, and you can see it can still move. Gotta give it a little smackdown sometimes. But when you push this button, it makes a fart noise. And your pallet is rigid as all get out. So, this just makes it very quick to change between fixtures, or I could have two of these made, and be loading parts offline. So as soon as a machine is done running with the first one, you can swap to your next one and get going, and then change parts out offline. Uh, it's a huge benefit if you have an ATC, but I didn't have a five grand to spend on it, so I'm stuck doing manual tool changes, but it allows me to walk away for almost 40 minutes between the first two tool changes. Uh, and do whatever else. Deeper parts, whatever. You can see the parts here. That's what they look like. Uh, the tools I'm using. Uh, tool 1, well, you can see the diameter, sir. I do use tool 1 twice, but it is what it is. So that's just kind of a quick rundown on my Pearson MPS. Uh, if you're thinking about getting one and you're just kind of on the edge, if you can justify the cost at all, it's worth it. Uh, this almost paid for itself, this job. And this is if I'm keeping with it, really hauling on it. To do 60 pieces of these would usually take me about two and a half days. Uh, they take quite a while each, to be fair, but the runtime was a day and a half with the system. And I was much more productive during that. My spindle time was almost 90% uptime uh, when I was down here working. Which is just incredible, especially for a Tormach, and especially because I just had somebody else on the user group, uh, not that it matters, but they were telling me that I, I'm lucky to be reaching 35, which that's not even true with a vice. I get 35% uptime when I'm sleeping. So anyways, that, that's just a quick rundown on my pallet system. I'm planning on doing a lot more on this, and uh, hopefully uploading more frequently. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and take it easy.